covering all your favorite parts of the 50-yard fight. This is the Inside the Walls podcast with Zach Heilman and Jim Mernier. Welcome new board to the latest edition of the Inside the Walls podcast. Zach Kyleman here, as always, alongside my co-host, buddy, pal, and the man on the scene in Jacksonville, Jim Mernier, as we come in for, well, another episode post-2022. Uh, and really, now we're just going to start talking mostly about 2023 and beyond. Uh, feels like we're already into that territory. I, I said, you know, man on the scene in Jacksonville. Uh, mm-hmm. Jim, the, the Sharks had a little bit of a presser on Friday, press conference for those that aren't in the in the know with that terminology um you were there so uh who uh who talked to you how how were how were things at the presser did the sharks uh put on a nice event come on let's let's break down the details i think some people know what this episode's about but i just want to hear how how that went well um first off if you haven't heard the news ladies and gentlemen um the jacksonville sharks announced uh the hiring of fort murray Columbus head coach Jason Gibson as their new head man. Um, yeah, it was a great event for Jacksonville. Had a couple of new agents, uh, the new almost in news agencies, but you had two of the news team, uh, sit, news stations in town um, in the event. Um, had a couple of fans, some guy, some people who are actually diehard fans of the Sharks that were there. The Gibson family was there, uh, and of course, you had the two beautiful trophies that were up on the podium of uh, that Gibson was close to winning one, and the other one. Uh, was one in 2019, but it was a good event. Um, let's just say I'm going to be honest with everyone. I had no idea that it was Gibson. Um, yeah, I know I'm the inside source of the shark uh, sharks, but had no idea it was Jason Gibson. Um, but talking with him, talking with a couple of fans, talking with his family, they're really excited for him to be here. He has the opportunity um, to come into Jacksonville and hit the ground running. So it's a, it's a big addition for the Jackson organization. Um, but overall, it was a good event. Um, and he is going to be a coach that is he's ready to work. And honestly, from the conversation I have, um, he's focused on one thing, is keeping the good players in Jacksonville, going after some elite players that he can attract in Jacksonville because of Jacksonville's brand. Uh, he's looking forward to get the 2023 season. I've talked to a couple of the owners. Um, they're tired of seeing what's happening up north. Uh, this is Jacksonville. Uh, we're, we win championships in Jacksonville, and that's the mentality here in Jacksonville. And Gibson is, a, I think, with his history in Columbus, um, now coming to Jacksonville, he has the assets to just, you know, step up his game even more. So it's, it's pretty cool, um, but I think he's very excited. The conversation I had, um, I won't disclose what he told me on a lot of things that he's focused on getting. Um, but he's he's focused and he's I, as a Sharks fan, um, it's what the Shark Nation needs. Um, we're one of the top tier for any football programs in the nation and it needs an elite coach and he is an elite coach. So, yeah, mm-hmm. it's it was a good event. Sharks had a good event. Everyone was there from I know uh, from the Sharks media group and for the Shark organization. And of course, you had Chum there and a couple of the uh, mascots and yeah it was a it was a, a neat event and then where we were at we're at the prime Osborne, prime osborne convention center which is an old train station um Ooh, back when, okay. when back when the trains were actually a you know the thing to do for travel uh and get and gibson was hiding in the room behind this uh the the meeting place in a what we're what we're going to call the situation room because it, it it literally is a replica of the situation room in the white house <laughs> nice. um, so that's where nice. he was hiding so it was pretty cool. I got a chance to get a question into the uh, the inter- uh, the press conference. Uh, I asked him about 16 years in Columbus, and now you come to your arch rival. What's your feelings like? And he's like, uh, "Next question." So <laughs> that's a yeah. That you, you kind of expect that from a coach who spent so many years in Columbus. And now I, I had a good I had a good chuckle when I heard that one live. I watched <laughs> the presser from Indianapolis, and you knew like, it was me, didn't you? Like, yeah. Well, yeah. I heard your voice. I'm like, good on you. Good on you yeah. putting a question in there. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, they had it set up for us about uh, the inside the walls there, but I wasn't going to be in front of the cameras because the, we were. I was going to be right next to Chitola. I was like, nah, I've been sitting down all day. I'm going to be standing up behind the camera. So that's where I was at. So, yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm. I'll, let's just run down through the numbers here before we get a little bit more into this. So you can clearly see if you're on YouTube, you, you'll notice our our new tickers we've been added here. But, I mean, look at Gibson's stats. What can you say? 130 wins on 174 losses with the Columbus Lions over 16 years with the organization. 35-27 playoff record. 
five playoff appearances by by the way there. Oh, well, actually, sorry, overall record, 130 wins, 74 losses. He has a, he has a different record, of course, in the NAL here, mm-hmm. 35 and 27 in the NAL. Five playoff appearances out of those, though, three NAL championship appearances in that tenure. Thing is, all three he's come up just short. Um, we've talked in the past at length how Jacksonville and Columbus are kind of kick things off for what is the NAL today. Um, Jason was partially instrumental with getting the Lions organization into this and kind of gearing this up. I mean, we've been, I mean, we've talked with, with Lions ownership and fans. I mean, he is basically the face of this franchise helped at least get them to where they are now. Um, So this is a little strange. Uh, I mean, and you take into context, you know, I think before the Sharks announced coach Burley's departure, they, it made it seem like Gibson had, decided I'm going to step away, focus on, you know, working on my, working on being with my family and being in the community in Columbus. Um, thing pieces kind of fall into place though. So they seem, uh, and I, and if I'm right, Jim, he kind of, he kind of alluded to a bit of that, uh, during the presser, kind of the, the things falling into place in Jacksonville, right, mm-hmm. right timing sort of thing. Yeah, he, he he touched on a few things on the presser and one of the comments that uh, really got to me about this whole situation about Jacksonville is what he said in the presser. Jacksonville is the New York Yankees of arena football. Um, when the job offer comes from a team like Jacksonville or a team like, let's say, the Arizona Rattlers, let's you know, tip a hat to the Rattlers, mm-hmm. um, but they belong in that conversation. Um, those are the type of jobs that if they come to it, you take it. it, it you don't. Like, oh, I'm going to just take be second guess and just, you know, sit back. You take that job. And that's what the uh, Gibson did. And the yeah. analogy of Jacksonville is the Yankees. Of That's a that's a big comparison because everyone knows the New York Yankees are they have multiple championships and eight, oh, crap, I think like 27 championships. That is um, we don't have that many. Well, I'd love to have that many in Jacksonville, but right. <laughs> um, but still, that's that's a high standard that he that Jacksonville is and what he represents and what he, as a person who coach outside Jacksonville, he knows what Jacksonville represents. So it's a, I, it's a touche almost uh, like the agreement acknowledgement of who, who the organization is. Um, but it's a, it's a, for me and for the people we have connections with um, uh, Zach, it's still odd to me. Um, Cause when you think of the Columbus lines, you think of Jason Gibson. Exactly. Um, now he is a member of the Jacksonville Sharks. So um, still pretty weird, um, but it'll take time to get over. But yeah, um, his, his comment about that was really amazing about how he represented the city of Jacksonville compared to a, a franchise like the New York Yankees. Uh, this may be ticked off a lot of people in the arena world but uh he even said it before he said it he goes this may get people huh, my my stir the pots in a little bit then he made that comment so yeah <laughs> um he knows what he's doing and one other comment that he didn't make that really i mean we hear this from players too uh, i came here because i wanted to be on the other side of that field with that crowd with that noise with that energy and i would be the i will be on that side looking forward to it Mm-hmm. He's right. Like every player we've talked to, from Mason Espinoza to Darius Prince to Lonnie Outlaw, to all the players we've had on this podcast, they've mentioned when they mentioned Jacksonville, they talk about the fans, they talk about the organization. Uh, that's an acknowledgement of what Jacksonville is. And he made those couple comments, and I was like, you know, he knows what Jacksonville is, and he knows the standard here in Jacksonville. The standard in Jacksonville in arena football is to win championships. Um, so. It, you can say he's adding some pressure to him, but then again, for Jacksonville, I don't think it's the pressure that you will get if you were, let's say, the, the manager of the New York Yankees. You're not gonna get that type of pressure, <laughs> right? Uh, but yeah, it, he made he made a couple of comments, and um, it, it's a lot of speculation. We don't know what's going to happen from this point on to where players start getting signed, in which the NL rules you can sign current players now if you wanted to, but you can't get anyone else from outside the league or other teams until I think November 1st is the day. So yes, um, mm-hmm. I think that's when everything is signing, but he did mention in his press conference that there's a couple of players on this team that he wants to keep. He doesn't want them to leave. And I guarantee we can kind of acknowledge who those guys are. They are the Naquan Murray's or the Devin Wilson's of the world on the team to keep them here. Um, but yeah, he he knows what he needs to do. 
Um, but I, I can't put any words in his mouth. I just know as a Sharks fan, it's a little kind of shocker that he's here. But at the same time, uh, this just instigates uh, a question that I want to ask you and I want to ask our fans who listen to our show. Um, uh, does Jacksonville versus Columbus enter the elite status of arena football lore? Um, what I mean, I know a lot of people say, oh, my God, they're going to say Orlando, Tampa Bay, we're on the four. Yeah, that was the elite rivalry back then. They no longer play each other. Back in the day, we had the Sabercats and the Rattlers. Jacksonville, Columbus, I think, enters that fold now because of this switch, because of Gibson coming to Jacksonville. That sparks more hatred into a rivalry where I think it got the berth in the 2017 NAL championship game on that fumble um, that basically ended Columbus's chance of winning the championship. That was at one – he was one play away. And yeah, I've watched that play many times. If Mason would have got that ball – the receiver was wide open in the end zone. They would have won the game in the buzzer. Um, so, yeah, does You're Jacksonville wrong. and Columbus enter the elite status in Ray football? Well, I, I was talking about 2017. I'm talking with that. You ain't you ain't wrong. I do think with one more play, we could be talking about a completely different scenario where maybe we have both of them split one in those mm-hmm. 2017 and then 2019, you know, elsewhere, vice versa, you name it. Or, I don't know, fate could change. Timelines, you know what I'm talking about. Uh in, I would say, look, the NAL, it's a de facto rivalry. I know I saw saw a few Columbus fans try and downplay it. Look, here's the deal, guys. They've beaten each other multiple times. It's the little guy versus the big guy is how I see it. you know. And it's the two founding, main founding organizations of the National Real League. You know, I'm, you, you might, if you're an NFL fan, you might be tracking. I'm talking like a Bears-Packers thing. So to me, you know, and they've had their moments. Last year they did too. You know, they had their moments against each other, you know, beat up on each other, won and split games. This is a rivalry to me. And these fans, I think, look forward to it. I think downplaying it that I saw because Gibson flipped a team was a little bit of ridiculous from some people. Mm-hmm. It is the de facto NAL rivalry. Um, where I'm going to be kind of scratching my head going, uh, I don't know. I'm on the fence with the is it in arena lore rivalry because you know i i do know I, as many of you know i'm the newest to the to the arena scene um in the, between us two um and I, I trust me i hear about the stories of the war on i4 uh all the time i know shark the sharks and predators are kind of start, starting to build up their previous matchups from the afl days now and with that crowd getting large in orlando hopefully Correct. that gets even more so this year um, and then, I mean, you want to look back, you know, the Rattlers, of course, had plenty of their own it's like Saber Cats, you know, rest their souls and that fan base out there in San Jose. Um, I, I would say it's at least in modern day arena, the like the, the current setting we have right now, the post AFL era. It's one of the better rivalries in this landscape. I would say it's it's one of the top ones in this landscape. Um, if I'm doing history, it still has a bit ways to go. To me, Columbus needs to win a championship. If I'm going to be honest with you, um, and I, if, once that can, if that, and if and when that happens, I hope it's more of a win for you Lions fans out there. At some point, then maybe we can start talking about about that. Because I mean, look at the war on I four; those two both split champion have both had championships in their years past. You know, uh, Rattlers in San Jose again, winning organizations, successful organizations in the AFL. Um, I think, like I said, the Lions, I think they need a little bit more. The Sharks have already – they've been an established program in at least the top level of the sport for over 10 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Lions have built themselves up and have become a powerhouse for the Gibson mentality of we do good recruiting, we do the best we can with the resources we have, and at the end of the day, either you – at the end of the day, you either have to outspend us or you're going to have to beat us, you know, pure talent on the on the turf. So – I think right now you can argue it's a tops in this moment in time. I just think historically a little ways to go, but still it's a good one. Like to me, the NAL should be hyping these up. If I'm being honest, like social media next year, I hope we see like specific, like these two bitter rivals are going at, cause they are mm-hmm. I, I, like, I know sometimes we go a little overboard with like, is this a rivalry question mark? Mm-hmm. This is the only one I can de facto say, like, I'm not going to like be wishy washy on it. You know these two, the founding members of this league, they get at each other. They're rough games. They get in their face. You expect nasty, competitive football. So, yes, this is definitely the, one of the best, if not the best, rivalry in arena football at this time. Well, especially in our game here in the National Arena League, there's a couple, oh, of, there's a couple other matchups that are starting to build that hatred. Like, Carolina's really trying hard to have one with Jacksonville. Uh 
it's it, we still look at Jet, Carolina's as a just a, a clone copy of us almost. Right. But uh, but yeah, when this when it when it started in 2017, uh, the three matchups we had with the Lions were pretty you know, competitive matchups in the championship game. I think was this uh, the the de facto uh, birth of the rivalry. Um, but especially this season, we had two games decided by one possession or the last play of the game. And then you have one game that was a complete, complete walk away. Uh, these two teams have history and Gibson coming to Jacksonville makes that history even more hatred. Um, but one thing I've noticed from a lot of the Columbus fans on social media, um, they feel hurt about it, but they respect Gibson for what he's did, what he did in Columbus. The guy spent 16 seasons in Columbus. He's won three championships with the Columbus organization. And so when he was in Columbus, they did not miss the playoffs in the, in the NAL. So he was consistently a winning coach. And the question I always get here uh, when I see on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram from a lot of the fans is, uh, was this a lateral move from Columbus to Jacksonville? And I just, you know, I, I, bring back that question to him. So if it's a lateral move, does coaching at Florida International, then you get the job at, let's say, University of Florida. Is that a lateral move? No, that's moving up in the ranks. Um, like he stated in an interview, like I've heard from other people, uh, there are selected jobs in the arena game that if that position's open and they come calling to you, you take it. And Jacksonville is one of those teams. Um, but for Columbus' sake, we, we're good friends with the Columbus organization. Um, the ownership group, and we've had conversations behind scenes. They're working on uh, some cool things this off season that they're going to announce here in a couple of weeks. And um, right now, the, co- the search is on for a new coach. But knowing that organization, they're going to try and stick with the Columbus way um, for a guy. So I, I look for if people ask me who's the next guy in Columbus, I still look for a guy who has connections to Columbus already. I think mm-hmm. that would be the first targets you'll see, but uh, we don't know any, any names yet. Um, there's some names that are getting thrown around, like Darren Daniels, for instance, who was a coach there this year. Um, but for Columbus, replacing Gibson is going to be hard. Um, the guy basically was the only coach there for the 16 years of existence, um, and it's going to take a time. And I've seen people tweet this and talk about this on all the NAL sites. This is like freaking Jimbo Fisher leaving Florida State and going to Texas A&M. I'm like, well, yeah, but no. Um, Jimbo won the championship at Florida State and left two years later. But still, it's the same coincidence here, especially here in the um, NAL. But for Jacksonville fans, um, yes, I did get confirmation from Steve Kern. Uh, we will have the a red challenge flag theme night the, for the first home game of the 2023 season. Um, <laughs> Um, they're gonna try to find a sponsor for that uh, because, as you know, we always complain that Gibson kept challenging every freaking play. So I'm gonna have the ch- red challenge that. flag night. So uh, <laughs> we're doing that. So it's it's gonna be pretty fun. Um, but yeah, uh, for Jacksonville fans, you're getting a a proven winner. Yes, he does have the the, the NAL championship, which people will bash him about. But the guy does have three championships in the arena game, so he knows how to win the big game. Now he has the crowd now he has the arena now he has the team and he has a budget to get the players that he wants where he can make that final play so i've already had messages with this who do you think he's going to bring to jacksonville i'm like jackson people with jacksonville ties and people with columbus ties that's who that's and he's played a lot of good players, so that's a I mean, long honest, list honestly, of players. Honestly, if you're on the Sharks, it's really anyone's game. That's mm-hmm. you know, sure you can bring over line. The instant assumption is indeed, you know, I think some ex Lions player, some you know ex Lions players under his tenure, you can argue from last year maybe won't look at him coming that way. Maybe you know, like you're talking Sharks, but honestly, when you have, you know, you have the you have the backing of a Jacksonville franchise, which, as we as some of us know, you know, they can. They can hang tough with the not with the uh, high, with the higher spending non cap teams like an Albany, like a Carolina, which I, it's ironic I say Carolina in that sense, but you know the, the connections. I, I digress. Yeah. No, nonetheless, nonetheless, it, it, honestly, anyone's free game. It all depends. Yeah. Do you want to come play for Gibson? And you know, I, I find this I find this move fascinating because, of course, we had we had three openings come up. You know, now it's two. Higgins move. Higgins was uh, parting wa- parted ways with Orlando. Um, and then we had, uh, of course, uh, 
you know, Gibson now moves over to Jacksonville, so that still leaves Columbus. They're searching, but it sounds like both those, hopefully sooner rather than later, will announce their head coaching positions. And power dynamic, I think, you know, we talking now po- 2023, extremely early, like, thoughts. Mm-hmm. Um, I Honestly, yeah, you got to get re-signings. Most are pretty much everyone's one-year deals. But, you know, recruiting-wise, I mean, shoot, man, I'm already – I'm already putting Jacksonville easily up in the top three, you know, and that could make, you can make arguments for each one of those top three with like say a Carolina or an Albany, if they mm-hmm. are going to go hard at uh, bringing folks back or getting new folks in. So, you know, I'm, we're still waiting on a few more positions to fill up and see how they run those operations. You know, clearly San Antonio, we can't doubt them with how they were bringing in talent at the end of the year. But, you know, I feel like Jacksonville, you know, I think you got to even feel a little more confident going in this season than last just with this movement. Well, right now, early off season, um, Jacksonville has basically fired shot, warning shot across the bow of every single NAL team, the other, especially the newcomers of Fayetteville and West Tex. The Jacksonville, this, they're, they're, they went out, they got their guy because they're tired of not winning championships. That's the standard down here in Jacksonville. Yep. Um, but because when you walk in that arena and look up, you see banners, you see co- conference championship banners from the AFL days. You see an arena bowl championship up there. You see two NAL titles up there and you see a win- winning organization. This, this team does not like losing. Uh, I, again, for the third consecutive year that Jackson was had a losing season, they've made the playoffs the following year. Um, they don't, they have never had a back-to-back losing season. And, Again, we'll have to wait at least two more years for that to even happen if that does happen. Uh, so that's a pretty lengthy streak. And also, Gibson has only had, I think, one losing season in his history. Um, that was like in 2011 or 2012 when he was in the, I think, PFIL in the days when they went 4-8. and eight. Ever since then, he's made the postseason. Out of his 16 years of coaching Columbus, he missed the postseason once. Uh, so he is a proven winner. Um mm-hmm. But, of course, everyone would point, oh, he has no NAL titles. Okay. He has no NAL titles. That, that can just that change. Look at Albany. They came in the league, no NAL titles, and bam, back to back. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be intriguing offseason. Now, the question is about Gibson coming here um, is, like you mentioned in the press conference, you only go as far as your quarterback. And now That's there true. are a lot of quarterbacks just not in the NAL, like an AFL or, not, excuse me, AFL, the uh, – uh, the IFL and the CIF that are very talented quarterbacks that, you know, might come back to the NAL. Um, of course, there's guys in this league, like Faithful was a backup quarterback. He could be starting somewhere in the NAL. Um, but Gibson, of course, he has a connection with Mason, but Mason's retired. He's not coming yes. back. He has his OC job. <laughs> no, no, uh, uh, no, no Espinosa in a Sharks helmet. No. That That is not happening. My dream just crumbled. Um because I've been talking to Mason behind the scenes and he's like, no, I'm done. I'm coaching. Um, so I was like, OC, 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 OC. <laughs> the office square. Um, he goes, no, Gibson has that. I'm like, okay, well, uh, I tried. Uh, but the coach, the players that you, people want to look at what he, what he's coached in his past. Like he, Darian Townsend, he's coached him. He's Fortson, who was very familiar with Jacksonville. That is one guy I want to say right now, I will not be shocked if he's in a Sharks jersey this season. That's Jermon Fortson. Um, because he's already played for Jacksonville in his past twice. He's a longer tenure in Columbus. Won't be shocked to see him back in Jacks. Um, there's other guys that, like a Paris Mack, who had a couple of years, a couple of seasons off, mm-hmm. um, especially last year. He has time with both Jacksonville and Columbus, so won't be surprised if he wants to make a return. But a, in addition of Gibson is almost comparable to a Moss to Jacksonville. He can go after guys he wants and they'll come to Jacksonville because Jacksonville has the budget to go. Yeah, we can get you, you get here, you get you here. Uh, and also there's guys on this team that I think, sh- you know, should stay or should have the option to stay like a shy, uh, Chai Hill, a um, um, Williams jr. Um, Devin Wilson, of course, mm-hmm. and possibly one of the quarterbacks like Arvell or uh, Mike Faithful. Um, and there's a couple of guys on the line scrimmage that you can get to and the DBs. But I think if Jacksonville has – if Gibson wants – knowing Gibson, he's going to get the best players he can in the Southeast. As you know, the Southeast is full of talented players. 
Yes. Uh, I won't be surprised if you see that receiving core next week have a next next week next next season be full of a be full of experienced guys from both Columbus and Jacksonville on that side, and and I'm not I'm not gonna be worried about where Jacksonville's offense is going to be next year, and poss- possibly he actually has arena now where he can get a kicker that can kick deuces and don't have to go around the, the right Pacific yeah. Center, so. <laughs> And a little um, scoreboard to deal with, too. Yeah, so um, it's going to be intriguing. Uh, of course, he can sign a player starting now. It's just the quarterback scenario going after quarterbacks this offseason. Um, it's going to be interesting with who he brings in. And knowing him, he's going to bring – if he can develop a quarterback like Mason Espinosa, which an MVP quarterback he became, uh, just picture a Mason, Mason Espinosa-style quarterback in Jacksonville with weapons like a Devin Wilson and Aquan Murray. Uh, that's a lethal combination. So – like he said in his presser, quarterback, center, the center of the ball, the lineman, uh, that's where you dominate and that's where you win football games, not by a skill player. So it's going to be very intriguing. And before Jacksonville fans, um, yeah, it's going to be very interesting. And again, if you haven't seen the ticker on the bottom, we will get Jason Gibson on this podcast for our show this week, talk about the adventure from Columbus to Jacksonville, what he has planned for Jacksonville. So you'll get more of that with Coach Jason Gibson this week. And next week we'll get a hold of the Fayetteville Ordership Group as they have a thing on August 23rd, which is on a Tuesday press conference at the Crown Complex as they announce their first logo of their team, coaches, and what the team is expect. So remember that that's another lazy, another thing, ladies and gentlemen. Follow them on Twitter at Mustangs NAL. Uh, mm-hmm. That is their thing on Twitter and Facebook. It's Faye Mustangs. Go find, follow them. Go follow. Also follow the West Texas Warbirds too. Uh, we got two new expansion teams. So Gibson this week, ladies and gentlemen. Next week, Fayetteville. The week after that, uh, West Texas, and possibly wrapping it up with the State of the Union or State of the League. State of the Union. <laughs> State Maybe, of the Union. Yeah. Um, we're gonna have Chris. Possibly get Chris Siegfried on here. To wrap up four straight weeks. Then. The offseason goes, and we'll bring you content as comes, breaking news from players, coaches, whatever. Um, but, yeah, thank you for trusting us as the source for your – not a source of your information for the National Arena League. Uh, but, yeah, big news, power shift in the National Arena League between the Columbus Lions and the Jacksonville Sharks. As the head coach for the – head coach of the Columbus, Jason Gibson, heads to Jacksonville. So, yeah, intriguing week. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> fun week. <laughs> fun. Very fun times ahead. Yeah. Also, I, want, I, I also want to acknowledge the Gibson family. They actually acknowledged me. Um, they say, "Hey, you you do the podcast?" It's like, "Yeah, I do." He goes, "She was like, man, I follow you every single episode." She was so she finally she says, "What's your last name?" It says Mernier. He goes, "She goes, oh, it sounds like on the intro it says Mernier. I'm looking for M O. I'm like, no, it's M E." And she's like, "Oh, okay, cool." She goes, I love your show. I love the other guy. You guys love the game. You guys put a lot of effort into the game. And I was like, well, thank you. That's our job. Uh, we love this indoor game, and and we want to bring more content to the league. So we're not going away. Uh, we're going to be here for the next couple of weeks, and then we might take an extra week off during the off season, and then we'll get back, ladies and gentlemen, to interview of players. Um so we want we want to find out where these players are going before we get them on. So we want we don't want to interview a player then if, he ends if up I, yeah, end, if possible if possible ends up to another team or another league. We don't want to mm-hmm. have him on the show. So um, it's not because we don't want to interview him. It's because we're contractually obligated can't. So, uh, but yeah, it's an interesting week, and it's only been a week in the off season. Like we basically just had a Black Monday for the NEL last week. Like the so, NFL has a Black right. Monday. So, yeah, Black Monday in the NFL, like six or seven coaches get fired each se- season in the NFL. Don't see that a lot in the NAL. We had two of them in the NAL. Um, I don't count the Gibson one as one. But, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty hectic. Um, but I think Jacksonville just fired some morning shots across every team's bow saying, yo, um, funny games are over. Um, this is our league. It's always been our league, and they're going to take names. Um, so expect Jacksonville to do things that I expect him to do, like we expect him to do. Um, and I'm very intrigued. And like, I got a question from a friend of mine. He said, does this put Jacksonville back into championship status in the NAL? It's like, yeah, we're in the top tier. Gibson is the type of person you got to guarantee that you'll make the champion or guarantee to make the playoffs. Um, he gets the right tools and pieces. He can get you into the championship game. And 
I know the party is going on in Albany right now, a week into it. I just want to tell you guys in Albany, I did buy Albany Championship gear. It's on its way. I should have it by either the next, not in this episode, but next episode. So I did live up to my word, by the way. There you go. Um, so, yeah, I'll be wearing some Albany Championship gear. And I just want to say to Albany, enjoy the off season. You deserve it. Um, but one thing about football, it's a year-round sport, and you can't rest on your morals. You have to keep pushing your way. For Albany fans, do your empire way, or is it the empire way, they said? That's your term? Uh, yeah. Yeah, empire, empire way. way. Or, mm -hmm. um, because I think teams like Carolina and Jacksonville um, this off season are not going to fool around. They're going to reload, and they're going to go after. And from early speculation, I think we're the league is targeting a 14-game season next year. Um, which is pretty good, um, and I'm intrigued to sell a couple of the matchups. So it's interesting. We're only one week into the freaking off season, and this stuff happens. So it's this is rare, ladies and gentlemen. We did the Mike Faithful trade and Warren Smith uh, video. Um, looking back on it, that really it was not really as major. But then again, we didn't know this is major. So any other major news that breaks in NL that deserves the emergency podcast, you get a free episode of inside the walls podcast um That's again right. i appreciate it ladies and gentlemen and zach what, anything else not too much i mean if anything just makes me think about 2023 all the, already you know haven't really been, it's funny i haven't really been able to process too much about 2022 but you know as we uh as we say the show must go on so oh, things yeah. already have to be processed for that one question week one I kind of say that week one should be Carolina Albany to kick off the season. Okay. Week two or week three should be the first matchup between Jacksonville Columbus. Build that, build it until you get that game. Don't don't give us Columbus and Jacksonville week one right off the bat. Should, don't. Well, we'll we'll find out. I mean, I think uh, a lot's at play if you mm -hmm. can if you can get the schedule organized early and you can start prepping that up asap. I mean. Man, that's several months in advance, so I don't know. It's hard. That's hard to not uh, make that commitment, too. And also, ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening to this and you're a fan of your favorite NAL organization, every single NAL team right now, besides Fayetteville, I think West Texas. I don't know about West Texas. Every NAL team from last season, give them a call. Get your season tickets renewed. All of them are renewing your tickets right now. Give your fans whoever you cheer for, go support your team, renew your season tickets. Um, because mm -hmm. when the schedule comes out, the regular season tickets will go on sale. And word of warning, you're going to see a lot of NAL ticket ads on here because that's what we're going to do. Because this off season, there's a lot of free time to do it. So yeah. um, just prepare yourself. But if you're a fan, season ticket currently of your NAL team, go renew your tickets. If last year didn't prove to you why this league is good, next year is just going to be as as I can say, yeah, I can say it. It's going to be better than 2022. Uh, a lot more storylines will be built into the next season. And you stick with us, stick with Zach, and we'll kind of pump it up a little bit. And we're still so many months away because other football begins this week too. Uh, and possibly next week with college football. So football galore all the time, every single week. It doesn't end for us. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I am Jim Renier. Alongside me is Zach Kalman. This has been a special breaking news podcast. Jason Gibson to Jacksonville has finalized. We'll see you Thursday for more Inside the Walls podcast with head coach Jason Gibson. Covering all your favorite parts of the 50-yard fight, this is the Inside the Walls podcast with Zach Kalman and Jim Bernier.